Sometimes we're called to participate in an adventure or a journey, and we don't yet know why. You just have this feeling that doesn't necessarily make much sense, that you really should go. I'm lucky. This has happened for me a whole bunch of times, and every time I've said yes and taken that tremendous leap of faith, it opened up amazing mystical experiences accompanied by a significant jump in personal awakening. In this episode, we talk about what happens when you follow that calling, the important work that unfolded in our journey to Peru, and how that's leading into the magic that's about to happen in our next spirit adventure in Scotland. And after the discussion, we get to the most important part. The group frequency calibration associated with this episode is where the frequency work happens and where change actually occurs. So be sure to listen to that. Without releasing distortion patterns targeted by the GFC, the change you want will be more difficult to attain because you haven't addressed the root of the issue. If you like this episode, I'd really appreciate your help. It'd be great if you could thumbs up this video and subscribe to my channel so you'll receive our latest content. This helps us increase our reach so we can help more people like you. My name is Karen Chong, and today in Mastering Your World Through Frequencies, we're discussing a tale of two spirit adventures from Peru to Scotland. So tell me about Scotland. Mm. What, I mean, why? Why yeah. are you going to Scotland? Yeah. It just like with Peru, it's a calling. And so it's a, the funny thing about when Peru came in as a journey, so for those of you who don't know this story of what happened, um, we were in Zihuatanejo giving a retreat on the awakening map, navigating the mystery of the void. And that was all about dropping from the headspace to the heart space. And we knew as a team that we were going to be doing something else that year in terms of a journey, but we didn't know what it was going to be. And then it, through a serendipitous, most like, odd dropping in of like magic coincidences, we ended up realizing that we're going to be making a journey to Peru, which seemed totally crazy at the time because we didn't know a guide down there. It's a Spanish speaking country. I mean, we speak some Spanish, but not like that fluently. We didn't know exactly what we were looking for. We knew we didn't want something touristy. We wanted somebody who would understand energy. Like there's a lot of stuff that we were hoping for. But literally from the beginning of that retreat, which was, I think, day one, and the end, which was, I think, day five, we had announced that we were going to Peru definitively. And when the knowingness came in with Peru, we realized very quickly that it wasn't the only journey, that there was right after Peru would be Scotland. And if you'd asked me to logically define why Scotland, I would have said there is no reason, because it doesn't make any sense, okay? <laughs> like, like logistically from... Um, like a, a event giver's perspective, like Europe is extremely expensive. Yeah. <laughs> it just is. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, it's like, you know, we know we're going to be going for some period of time. Is this going to be too expensive? Like Scotland isn't on like your top 10 list. You know, like if people think of like top 10 spiritual places to go, it's like Machu Picchu, the pyramids of Egypt, you know, like all these different things. They're not like, Scotland! It's not up there, you know? As much as Scotland is awesome, it's not like really like on the top 10 list, yeah? Mm -hmm. So for many reasons, it made no sense. But we knew that Scotland was right after Peru because Peru was all about raising our frequency resonance to the level of the quantum so that we could seed the light codes, which basically interact with your field of resonance so that you can recognize and understand and be aware of your true potential without the human distortion. So seeing the light codes happened in Peru. Yeah. With a, a lot of beautiful, magical moments. Mm -hmm. And the people that left that retreat yeah. have been touched so deeply by it mm -hmm. that they also recognized there was another part to this journey. Yeah. And it has taken us or will take us to Scotland. Yes. So when this has happened, this sort of awakening to the next part of the journey. Yeah. And understanding that it's going to logistically mind wise doesn't make sense. No. <laughs> but it has to happen. Yeah. What has unfolded for you and us as a team as this has been transpiring? Has it become clearer 
I yeah. guess the question is, yeah. why do we need to go, go to Scotland? Scotland from Peru? Yes, especially. Yeah, you know? exactly. So in Peru, like I said, we did this massive jump in consciousness where we could actually, like I said, see the light codes. And from my perspective, all of this work that we do on spirit level is not just for ourselves, but it's for the collective. And it's not just to have a spiritual experience. It's actually to have an embodied experience because we're not just spirit. We're also embodiment. So the thing about the awakening process that I think most people forget is they think it's all a pie in the sky out there somewhere. And at some point, like, I don't know, maybe you'll rise up in like a white burst of light or I don't know what the hell heck they think is going to happen. But anyway, to me, the awakening experience is about the embodied experience of consciousness that's expanding and rising in frequency resonance. So that is that why you put the San Miguel um, retreat before Scotland? Yes. Because you, you in Peru, it was about seeding and these light codes. Yep. And then it, there was this understanding that we had a step that had to happen, which yeah. was embodying it. Yeah. And so again, I'm coming back to the question, okay, so if we have embodiment, why do we have to go to yeah. Scotland? You know? Because awakening is infinite, really. Mm -hmm. And as we rise in our consciousness and as we rise in vibrational level, we get to do more mm -hmm. and we get to experience more. So I've been feeling for a while that there has been something to do with the Christ consciousness mm -hmm. that is coming through. And the reason I talk about the Christ consciousness, and it's not something, so just for everyone to know, I wasn't brought up within that tradition. Yeah. So I wasn't brought up like within a Christian framework. Um, we went to schools that were loosely Anglican, but I wasn't really brought up like within the church or even knowing the stories. Yeah. Okay, so I'm kind of like clueless when it comes to that storytelling. But there is something outside of that religion, which is the Christ consciousness which has to do with a level of consciousness with a certain level of frequency. And that consciousness has a grid around the earth. And that consciousness grid is there for us to rise in our vibration even more when it's time, when we're ready. And now finally, we've been getting to the point with all this work we've been doing with Peru, with expressing the light codes, mastering quantum embodiment in San Miguel, we are finally getting to this level where we can start to not only access the Christ consciousness, but do something really important, which has been missing for a long time. So I just want to, if I can, please, before you carry on, because I would love to just nip this in the bud now. Sure. We are talking about the Christ consciousness. Correct. Not Jesus the man. No. We're talking about something quite different. Yes. We're talking about a consciousness that existed that we understand right now at this level understanding that Jesus had embodied. Yes, correct. But Jesus is not the Christ consciousness. From my perspective, correct. Okay, so we are talking about a level of frequency that we're calling the Christ consciousness. Yes. And you are saying that in Scotland, you understand right now at this current time that there is work that we can do mm -hmm. that will allow more of us mm -hmm. as a mastermind and a collective Yeah to entrain to this higher resonating frequency. Exactly. Oh. I know, it's so exciting. And the thing about the Christ consciousness, okay, so I'm not talking about the being. Yeah. I'm talking about the consciousness. Yes. Okay, so that is there waiting for us, like I said, to help us to ascend. It's a higher level consciousness. Mm. And it doesn't have, um, it's neutral, it's a consciousness. It's mm. not human. Yeah. Okay. So just like you said, Jesus, the man, existed and he embodied that consciousness. And it's interesting to me because he's not the only being that has. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. There are other beings that have, that have risen to the level where they actually can. The thing that's interesting about our current structure in terms of how we storytell about the man, and don't forget, I'm not an expert on this. Okay. So I'm not saying that I am because I'm not, is that there's been a focus almost entirely on the Christ consciousness that consciousness embodied through a man. I'm yeah. not saying he wasn't marvelous, because he is. Mm. Okay, that being is amazing. There is another being who was as important as him that has been completely negated, and her name is Mary Magdalene. She embodied the Christ consciousness through the feminine. Mm. Now, I just said that the Christ consciousness is neutral, because it is. It's a consciousness. Yeah. But in our humanness, we are very distorted with regards to that consciousness, right? Especially because we've been focusing almost solely on the masculine expression of it. 
So when you say just to, just to make sure that we have a clear understanding as a listener, mm -hmm. that we have a lot of distortions around this consciousness. You're talking about the Christ consciousness. Correct. We have distortions as human beings yeah. around our understanding of what the Christ consciousness is. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, because right? I, mean, I don't think it takes very much to figure that out. I mean, there have been war, I mean, right, wars perpetrated in his names, like killings in his name, like to horrible things mm -hmm. have been done supposedly in his name. Yeah. Which is very antithetical to what that consciousness is. Mm -hmm. So I don't think, I don't think anybody listening, it's not like a massive stretch. No. To, <laughs> to look at history and see that there's been a lot of distortion. With I it. think what the stretch might be for mm -hmm. some people, not all, I think it has become kind of general knowledge that there was a female part to this. Yes. Or a feminine mm -hmm. part yes. to this. Because we exist as male and female on this planet. Yeah. How would the Christ consciousness, mm -hmm. a higher resonating frequency, just choose one, one aspect to yes. be in manifestation? It exactly. makes no sense, yes. right? Yes. So the stretch might be for some people is to understand that there was a feminine. Yes aspect mm -hmm. of the Christ consciousness yeah. and you're saying that aspect is the Mary Magdalene. Yes and I think there's a lot of also from my observation there has been a lot of distortion with regards to it being exclusively masculine in, depending on the the lineage like whoever's talking about it you know mm -hmm. the tradition that is talked about and that it doesn't exist in the feminine or yeah. it's the, the feminine is too weak or not empowered enough or not worthy or, you know, there's that sort of narrative that happens, which I'm not very clear on exactly because I don't know all the books. Yeah. But there's been, I think it's safe to say that there has been a negation of this consciousness through the feminine. Yeah. Which, and the first being that held that frequency is Mary Magdalene. And even if you read about who she is, she was considered to be a prostitute, I think. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She was sullied. Sullied, yeah. yeah. So she's not even his his equal, mm -hmm. right? And so it's interesting how that has been portrayed. And I'm not talking about these beings. I'm not expert on the beings. I'm not yeah. expert in the religions or the books. That's not no. what I'm expert on. And really, I'm talking about this from the aspect that I am an expert in, which is like consciousness and frequency. So you have a consciousness that's very, very high resonant. Mm -hmm. And then as humans, how we've expressed it and embodied it has been completely focused on the masculine, almost mm. exclusively, and there has been a negation of half of it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The other half. And now, look, we are all embodied beings, and so we have both the masculine and the feminine within us. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about your sexual orientation. I'm talking about these essences, which are part, we are all have these two essences to varying degrees. Just like that, in the embodiment, there has been a negation of something very critical to make it a whole, and that is the frequency resonance of the Christ consciousness embodied in the feminine and expressed in the feminine, which was first held by Mary Magdalene. But I just also want to make a distinction. You know, I'm talking about the feminine embodiment of the Christ consciousness. Now, there in other traditions, other feminine aspects, you know, like in the Indian traditions and in even like Kuan Yin, the Bodhisattva of compassion, she's well, she's somehow herm hermaphroditic, actually, because she's female and male. But in any case, the, it's not like the, it's not like I'm suggesting that Mary Magdalene is the only feminine elevated being. Okay, yes. so just to make that super really clear, mm -hmm. what I'm suggesting is that she was the first expression of the Christ consciousness through the feminine, specifically this consciousness. Right. So why do we care? And yeah. why is this important? And why Scotland? What's she got and to do, do with, with Scotland? Scotland? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so from my perspective, the land in Scotland is really clear. And I feel like it's been clarifying, 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 clarifying quietly for some period of time. Because I feel like just like, you know, Peru is a PowerPoint and parts of Egypt are PowerPoints. Scotland is too. And it's becoming more so. It's less known, but it is becoming more so. And that land has been clarifying to the point that we can be there and use that frequency resonance, the clarity that exists there, to help us to move our frequency resonance up to do what we need to do with regards to the Christ consciousness. Mm. It's interesting you should say that. Mm -hmm. I once met uh, a man a while ago that told me that the, the ancestors in Scotland are staying there deliberately to help the yeah. people that come. I was like, wow, that was yeah. fascinating to me. Yeah, yeah. It's like everything in Scotland is getting ready for this time where it plays a pivotal role in ascension. Mm. 
And I've also heard that more and more people are being attracted to Scotland, which mm. I think is fascinating. Because like I said, it's not like usually on people's like top one, <laughs> you know, place to visit, but it's becoming more so for spiritual circles. <clears throat> so I think that it's something that people are starting to feel. And because it has so specifically to do with the Christ consciousness, mm. part of what we're doing when we're there is like restoring or reclaiming, I'm not even sure what to call it, this aspect of the Mary Magdalene frequency, the mm. feminine aspect of the Christ consciousness, the embodiment of the Christ consciousness, so that it can reunite with the masculine and form like a whole in terms of our expression, understanding embodiment of it. So when it's whole, that is when the resonance of it, like we get to access a higher ver resonating version of it rather than one that's been like really distorted for like millennia now. And almost suppressed, right? Yes, suppressed, yeah. Mm. And so then what we can do is we can embody that wholeness as opposed to something that's fragmented and distorted. Mm -hmm. And not only will it then allow for us to rise in our own personal frequency resonance, but it also is a massive, huge gift of service because then that consciousness is expressed wholly as opposed to fragmented mm -hmm. the way it has been which makes it accessible for others to train into and to rise with. And that's what the Christ Consciousness Grid is for. It's for there, it's there for us to help us to ascend. Yeah, yeah. Do, okay, so does this, at this moment in time, do you know if this has anything to do with the light codes and the embodiment of the light codes, or was that just a preparatory step? Or? Yeah, that it was a preparatory step. Mm -hmm. We had to get high enough in our resonance that was like the first thing of like first step into again becoming quantum into to catalyzing a memory of who we truly are. And then with San Miguel and embodying it and starting to master like what does it mean to be quantum embodiment? That's in the body because we can't negate the body. That's mm. the whole thing about so many religions is a negation of your physicalness. You have chosen embodiment. You are choosing to awaken through the body. To exclude the body is like excluding the feminine. It's like, what's the, I mean, it's like, as if it's not there, you're in it. You know what I mean? Well, you give life. Yes. As well. Exactly. If you have a feminine body. body so yeah. It's interesting because, um, for what I understand, the little bit I do understand, the Mary Magdalene uh, manuscripts that are written, mm -hmm. there, there's a few, there's three there, I think, I believe, that are legitimate yeah. um, manuscripts. That is one of her premises. Huh. that you cannot negate the body, Yeah, you must do this through the body. body. So it's yeah. fascinating that you're echoing that. that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what I'm hearing, I mean, mm -hmm. correct me please if, if I'm misunderstanding, that this is also to do with being in service. Yes, for, yes. And it's it's lovely to have that journey where it's, it was a personal journey to raise the frequencies, to become aware, to embody, yeah. and now to step into being in service yeah. as a, a collective or a mastermind yeah. that yeah. are all very much aware of their humanness and very much aware too of their connection to pure source and um, their brilliance. Yeah. So I'm guessing at this stage you have no idea what's going to unfold, but yeah. you have an idea that this yeah. has to be done. Yes, exactly. And that's why it is an act of service. It's also an act of power. Mm -hmm. Because for so long, it's sort of like we've always been less than, less than, less than, non-deserving. Yeah. But when you have the feminine that's restored, mm -hmm. that has been negated, I don't think there's much question about that, what happens is you have wholeness. There's no more less than. Mm. It just is. Mm. And so what we're doing is I'll, in what this per, very personal journey for some of us, you know, it's kind of an intimate thing mm. to raise your frequency resonance and then also to be, to knowing that you're in service to and contribution to the highest level order frequency. What does that mean? That means to allow consciousness to rise even more. But people who are called to this, it's not about like, you know what I mean? Like everybody, like these days, if you look at the influencer society, everybody wants to be known by their name and what they're mm -hmm. doing and it's very published and like all that stuff. This is very quiet, mm. right? This is this is what I mean by service to the highest order of vibration because it's not for the ego minds, like pat on the back, like I did this great thing, everyone look at me. Mm. It is so far beyond that. You're being called because of who you are 
it doesn't matter what you have done in the past. You know what I mean? Like people are like, well, am I good enough? Am I worthy? I'm like, if you're called, you're called. Exactly. And so if you're called, it's because you know within yourself, there is something within you that needs to answer that calling. Mm -hmm. So cause I think people can get really caught up when it comes to journeying. Like, oh, I'm not good enough. I haven't done enough of the work. I haven't done... I haven't sat at the feet of the guru for long enough or whatever the heck it is. Or the opposite. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I didn't do that. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. Yes. Or I have, I have done, done that. This. I have done that. I have done. I should be there and you should. shouldn't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Both can show up. And those are all huge <laughs> ego mind distortion patterns. But this has to do with something so far beyond the mind. This is like, I know that this is how I'm meant to contribute. I don't know what that means. Mm. I don't know what the ripple effect is. I don't know necessarily how this will look in my life or what that will mean for anyone else. But I know that by me being there and being aware of myself and committed to raising my own resonance, something is going to happen. Mm. And the thing is about this mastermind and the intention of this journey is it's really, as you said, like the whole journey is an act of service, really. Mm -hmm. And it is about, um, we don't know as humans, like we're not as privy to all the details of like, well, at least I'm not <laughs> privy to all the details beforehand of what is going to happen and why. I just know that that's what I'm in service to and that people who are called to also being in service to the highest resonating order of vibration, that this is going to be something compelling. And like we said just now, I mean, it's not just for ourselves. Because let me just make this really clear. With the people who went to Peru, their lives have completely changed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and there's been so much acceleration and shift and transformation. Mm -hmm. And like, like it's it's kind of mind-boggling what's happening with them yeah. in their personal journeys. Oh, if we had time to talk about the transformations and the serendipitous moments that people have experienced, we'd be here all day. They, yeah, it's mind-boggling. So, yeah. so, yes, you're doing it for you. And... There is also this other thing at work that's greater than all of us. And when we come together in this way to serve, in this way where we're kind of blind in a sense, yeah. right? We're just, we're in surrender. Like, it's not like there's a map. It's not like we are scripted and we know exactly what we're doing. We don't. Nope. We really don't know. And, and in a way, from a logistics and a human perspective, that's harder. <laughs> because you're trying to plan for it. And you're like, okay, oh, man, I just... And then all the synchronicity support, it's just kind of like mind boggling. Yeah. But yes, it is an act of service and it's an act of power because it has been negated for so long. Yeah. And I don't mean this like you need to be female to be on this trip. No. Not at all. This is, look, if you're a guy out there and you feel called to this, you are because through your lineage, through your past lifetimes, do you think that you've not experienced this? Of course you have. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's a fundamental something missing. And so we, all carry both the masculine and the feminine. Oh, I, th I think even just, this is my own bias, I'm aware of it, but the more men that we have that understand what needs to be done mm -hmm. for the fem feminine aspect of this co Christ consciousness, the better. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, we need to be in unity yes. with this. Yes. Right? Exactly. Mm. Yeah. So I think it's a... Um, I don't know exactly what will unfold. <laughs> Stay tuned. Maybe we'll do another podcast afterwards <laughs> and we'll talk about what happened. But I just know that it's tremendous exciting and that it's, I mean, even as I'm, I'm writing emails about what this trip is, like I'm moved to weeping. Mm -hmm. And that's not typically what happens to me when <laughs> I write emails. Um, but I just know that something very uh, fundamentally important is um happening and will unfold there and i don't need to know what it is um i'm just so curious to see what it's going going to be mm, I'm, I'm also curious to see who the mastermind will be oh me too like who's going to be called yeah 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 because we're going to be going to all these amazing places and we're limited by the number of seats on the bus yeah but it's so fascinating when people put up their hands you're like oh and that's what the mastermind is yeah. fascinating yeah it's beautiful it's so beautiful yeah. I think it's probably wise to leave it here. Okay. Because we, we we just really don't really know yet fully. No, we don't. We just know this little part of it. And somehow that's magical in itself. So, yeah, totally. Okay, so that was a lot of talk about the um, Scotland journey. And always, as always, you're very generous and offer a free GFC at the end of this discussion. I'm really curious about what that would be. Yeah. I, for me, this GFC that is associated with this episode has to do with 
the polarity that's existing around the masculine and the feminine, okay? So I mean that, you know, for a very long time, there's been masculine oppression of the feminine. And now as the feminine starts to rise, there's been a bashing of the masculine and belittling of them emasculation. So it seems like everyone's fighting each other, right? And even if, you, and it's, I think, worse if you're somebody who's more fluid, right? So if you're, the, if you're kind of like more fluid in how you identify or even how you are sexually, I think it's really confusing because now you have two opposites that are like warring with each other. So this particular GFC has to do with harmony and it has to do with within self, this, the harmony between the masculine and the feminine because it exists within you, however you express it, however you embody it. So for those of you who are wanting to find more unity within yourself so that you can be your best and most whole self, then I highly recommend listening to the GFC associated with this episode. And if you found this episode helpful or interesting, please share it with a friend. We're about to start the group frequency calibration, or GFC, where we actually do the frequency work and where change is catalyzed. To get to the GFC, click on the square that'll appear to the right or the link in the description below. It's time to bring in a new experience, a new consciousness, and a new world. Let's rise together.